What's good with YouTube? You already know. Big Flacco from Convict's perspective. And I'm sliding on through. And I'm going to smash and dash and come through with that little bit of energy. And as you could tell by the title, yep, we're going to talk about a woman who had a major impact and influence within the Aryan Brotherhood. A woman named Gina Keseberry, who's originally, I believe, from Cocoa County. Has a lot of associates out there, as well as in Vallejo. Um, now, she also has some co-defendants. And see, the reason why I'm bringing up this um, particular uh, woman was several women this week pled guilty to several uh, methamphetamine dis distribution charges. Gina Kissaberry, who was known as the leader within this group, Stacy Bladden, Nancy Phillips, and another woman. Now, several of these women were, were actually released um, from jail at this time. I don't know if COVID had a big factor to do with that, but that ended up occurring. Now... Gina was also indicted with Yandel. Now, she's already um, been established that her sentencing is a minimum of five years on this case. But for some reason, they're going to sentence all these other women but her. I think that maybe they're going to keep her case a little bit separate because she's potentially going to be going to trial on the Yandel case. Now, allegedly, she was a fame member. I don't know how, uh, how these uh, white factions uh, operate. Fame is a group out of Coco County that's pretty well recognized where Yandel has his roots. Okay, um, but, you know, a lot of times my understanding of women that are involved is that they're never ever labeled as gang members, but they're more along the lines of associates. <coughs> okay, now, she was indicted based upon phone calls with Yandel. Being given directives and instructions on certain drug deals where the safe houses were going, and so forth. Um, she was also using a lot of these women to ass assist her in uh, the things that needed to transpire, such as moving the product. Even one of them went as far as to fake a heart attack because they had to get product to a certain location. So they were kind of <coughs> operating in a very, uh, 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 how you say it, almost sophisticated type of uh, uh, operation, but at the same time, as women like to gossip, she was breaching everything to the wrong people. And so this is going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Um, I was kind of shocked that she was already out there on the streets. It's very hard to get an order release when you have a federal indictment. She wasn't only uh, indicted with these women, right, and known as a leader, but she was also ind indicted on this Yandel case, which is set to go to, to trial in February of 2023. So this is going to get interesting to see where it goes, man. And this is a prime example of things that me and Rojo have reiterated over and over again. It doesn't matter whether you're a member of these groups or uh, associate or doing a little part. These other women got caught up on indictments that were tied to the AB. Therefore, their charges are a little bit more enhanced than what a normal person is going to go through because of that prison gang association. <clears throat> you know... And, uh, you know, I, I read a whole lot of other cases. She is pretty much in line and been mentioned in several cases. So apparently she was out there being a major factor as far as in the drug operations and, and so forth for the Aryan Brotherhood. And from reading this case, a lot of us are kind of blind to how the AB operates. We don't really know how they function um, as opposed to like the NF and MA. The AB have their own little network of how they do things. And it kind of shows that it's almost uh, resembles the way the NF operates. You know, except for in this situation, they were involving their females a little too much. You know, I don't know if that's from lack of manpower or lack of trust. But, um, you know, other things that have been going on with this case, man, is, uh, you know, they're all conspiracy cases. You know, the other case is going to go to trial. And that's the only thing that I could pretty much come to terms with is why she hasn't been sentenced yet but if you want to look at the ab queen that was having that pool and having that authority man it was that this female named gina kissaberry you know um i'm kind of interested to see where this case goes man because <clears throat> a lot of this case it case is based upon cell phone conversations man and i'm sure as they go through more discovery before trial a lot more things are going to come out um I mean, there's been speculation that uh, powders, they tried to, to subpoena powder. 
um, to do a little discussion as far as what he's done on YouTube. So I don't know what type of tactics the AB are trying to, uh, you know what I'm saying, they're trying to implement to, on their defense. You know, I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. You know, and I'm pretty sure more stuff is going to come out, like I said, man. So let's stay tuned, man, see where it goes, man. But this week, three females associated with the AB, including the one that they considered the leader, pled, pled guilty. Anyways, a little bit of breaking news about this, man. And, uh, you know, if you're, you know, if you're out there and you're involved in the mix and you're trying to make that dollar, you got to be careful. You know what I'm saying? Because these are prime examples of how people get caught up just trying to either, you know, some people, some of these women just want to be involved. They feel important, you know, but for a lot of us out there that are, that have struggled out there in the streets, we only do what we have, we do because we have to, because there's no other options, you know, but some people want that recognition. Some people want that title. And these are the consequences of it, a federal indictment, you know, now, instead of looking at maybe three to five years on a typical drug case, you're looking at 20 to 40 years, 40 years, easily, easily, without a doubt. Anyways, um, you know, it was interesting how they mentioned her as a member of fame. I know a lot of those cats. Um, <laughs> Shamrock, I knew Giggles before Giggles got killed, and a couple other cats. And uh, they were always cool dudes, man. But I never, ever heard them ever say that, uh, that the, that the fame allowed women to be within that group. You know, they <clears throat> they wear a lot of Irish pride stuff, a lot of green. Um, they have uh, certain shamrock tattoos as well. But they're not a racial, racial motivated group at all. They'll mess with blacks. They'll mess with Mexicans. They'll mess with anybody as long as they're making their money. You know, and a lot of these white factions, especially from up, up north, do not operate under racial overtones as far as they're focused upon the purity of the race. A lot of them don't care about it. A lot of them will be rocking with Nortenos out in the streets or Sudanos or blacks. They don't care. As long as you're bringing in the money, that's going to be the whole focal point. And that's why you've had other white factions who have resisted the Aryan Brotherhood because they feel that the Aryan Brotherhood is not about the purity of their race. They're more about the money, which is probably true. All these organizations are based upon getting that money. You know what I mean? That life in general revolves around money. So it doesn't change whether you're locked up or you're out there on the streets. You know, but we need to make wiser choices, man. And, uh, you know, don't be caught up like these women were. Because now they're looking at a gang of damn time, man. And, and that's just the way it goes sometimes, man. But anyways, this is just a quick uh, breaking exclusive. They just played guilty this week. Um, I thought I would talk about it because it's very rare that we talk about women that are tied in with these group factions. I mean, I know the NF in the past have had certain women that run their operations or communications, right? But they've never been given or bestowed that authority to ha run safe houses and to establish the workers and so forth. Usually they're just a line of communication, a, a pipeline that's basically being utilized. This right here, she was deeply involved. She was on the phone getting uh, communications, establishing safe spots getting work over here, doing everything she was told by the brothers that were locked up. Anyways, it's your boy Flacco. Convict's Perspective, I'm out.